user-generated content in video games is an art form and user-generated content in video games are works of art. There's user-generated content designed to impress people and there's user-generated content with a deeper meaning behind it. 99% of the user-generated content in video games are the former. Take Doom Watch, for example. Most of them are the creator trying to create a Doom Watch or anything else in a video game to impress or show the potential skills of the creator with the limits of the game engine they're using to create stuff. The 1% on the other hand try to tell a story or try to do something meaningful with their work. Like auto levels in Mario for example. The player turned viewer is Show the level where gameplay is removed completely, giving the viewer two things to focus on the visuals and the narrative. Although this mod that, I, that I'm going to be covering in this informational walkthrough today isn't an auto level, it is one of the latter things that try to tell a story behind it. So yeah, strap on your headgear, grab your BFG 9000, and we'll go through a walkthrough of a mod that shows us that horror doesn't always have to come from a caco demon or a pinky or any other demon in general. So the first episode of Doom starts off fairly normal. Frame rate's kind of jittery, you know? I'm playing and recording this video at the same time. I wasn't able to 
This stage is what we call the normal behavior of the person, as represented by E1 and 1, referencing the person that once was. But as you will soon see, things are not going to go very right with this stage. There are some examples that you might find here. Mm -hmm. Like, remembering that certain things just don't look right. This is probably where I should start by introducing you to a painter known as William Utemann. He was the German artist who painted a lot of good portraits until 1991. Or 1995, if I remember my date wrong, dates wrong, he was diagnosed with dementia. His nurse asked him to paint self-portraits of himself to describe the disease's diagnosis. So, in his very first 1967 painting, was a sketch of himself as he once was. But the 1995 painting, it's, it's early on in the disease's life, but uh, you would probably soon notice like, the, the use of colors in the wrong places, for example. The rules of artistry are not being followed, or if they are being followed only sporadically, And we will later on see loss of loss of his facial no loss of knowledge of his facial features of William Utemann's facial features and he has lost a technical skill. This is also similar to a, a music project by the caretaker called Everywhere at the End of Time. Stage one represents a somewhat normal functioning brain. The stage one on the album more or less represents the clinical stage two of the person's life, which is kind of ironic. So, with that said, let's move on to the next stage, and therefore the next stage of the illness.
seems a bit slower than I remember. Huh. I, the doom guy, opened the secret. The opening the secret, at least not on this plate. point we're already starting to see the victim starting to forget things. For example, forget important names, important dates, places that they had just been to, and things like that. Here, we'd, we'd forgotten that the song was that was actually faster in the original version of Doom. Kind of like how our, the memory of an Alzheimer's patient is slowly but surely going. In the next clip, which you see here, we forget that we open the secret, e secret entrance to a secret area. We we somehow forgot that that was available. And, and as strange it is, as it is, forgetting things continues on with this switch that was supposed to lower a wall, but here nothing happened. Maybe Doom Guy already lowered the wall, yet forgot about it? I can relate this to stage 2 of Everywhere at the End of Time, but not sure which album, but in the Utramolan painting I can represent it with the misplaced facial features painting. The green shirt and the black background, which really complement the whole scene. With that, on to stage 3. Did we just complete the level before going through the exit portal? Hmm. Okay. Seems like we jumped forward in time or something. Hmm. Wow. started facing a wall for some reason. One of the developers said he actually needed to start point and then Okay. 
Wait a second, now I know something is missing. Isn't there supposed to be like a platform where you can that you can ride up on to get uh, extra goodies? I know I managed to make something go down, but what? Oh. And then is it also supposed to be supposed to be a window where you can watch your soul sphere from somewhere? the red key card and that was supposed to open up a wall full of imps and nothing happened okay okay now I know for sure that something's not right this area didn't look like this one I went to meet the first time did it or does it always look like this? Huh. <laughs> now, if I were to quit this stage in dementia, this would probably be the point where you would definitely notice something was wrong with my confusion with the jump in time. Don't worry, there will be another jump in time later, so be ready for that. On that note, we're at stage three 
of the the swad, which is E1 and 3, toxic refinery. We started off on the wrong point for some reason, due to the author having accidentally deleted the start point of the map. And E1 and 3, the, or rather, or Alzheimer's stage 3 rather, is the point where you realize, wow, this is not normal aging, not in the slightest. Now, I know for sure there's seriously something wrong with me. And the things wrong with Doom Guy in the level will be cropping up. Like, for example, there was a, a boy that asked for a blue key card when the textures were red for some reason. For some reason that didn't make sense to me. So, what on earth happened there, I don't know. And, and then there was the fact that the, there was a missing window where you were supposed to be able to watch a soul sphere for some reason. And I didn't know, know this until later on in, after I went to upload the first impression playthrough of the video. But there was supposed to be a door where you could watch it enter, enter into a shooting gallery with some demons, which would have been pretty cool. When I hit the button, I didn't know what I made go down. So when I went back to find out, I found a flight of stairs for some reason. Which was kind of weird. The jump in time point of this, of this uh, stage is coming up rather shortly. And I do mean rather shortly. Right after I... Yeah, those are pretty weird textures. And to be honest, I find this sort of texturing kind of weird in a game like this, but for... In a game like Doom. But for, for this mod, it kind of makes sense to the fact that it's alluding to the corruption in Doom Guy's mind. And here's the point where I managed to find a jump in time. I know I was clicking on that switch in a sudden jump of time, and when I get when I went to get the red key card, a wall was supposed to open up, but nothing happened. Maybe the events happened and Doom Guy forgot about it, and. It looks like the arena changed for some reason to have a walled off texture rather than an open area. Either this is just me or I was going, either this was just my mind messing with me or I was going completely insane. Of course I do the latter in the, in the, uh, the stage after the uh, com computers, after the um, uh, central processing stage, which is a uh, Bobo Slab, at least as far as I know. And I was correct in knowing that if this would if this were a stage of dementia, there would be something really wrong with you. And I didn't know that secret was supposed to exist, um, unless I was totally mistaken. Oh boy. We're fighting demons and then all of a sudden we get more of the gray textures. And this is a room with the blue key card that it has, for some reason, an exit door texture just to confuse me. 
This is what I found the most confusing. Why color a blue key card room with an exit door texture? Makes no sense to me. Thankfully I got some armor out of that. And then there was this hole in the floor that really gave me the creeps. And, and by give me the creeps, I meant in a real sense. There were even gray textures on the stairs. And for the first time in the history of Doom, I was actually thankful to have found an exit. Because I really, really needed that exit so badly. And I do mean that in the the most serious sense of the word. This was just strange. But just you wait. The true destruction of coherency begins now. Wow. Just... Wow. Alright. This is a great again. Okay, that's a strange way to open a door in Doom if I ever did see one open like that. Exit door textures on the uh, in the uh, wrong place. Decline territory. This is where it's going to become clear to everyone around you that there's something wrong with you. And some of the symptoms of modern decline, moderate decline, begin to show as well, like an unusual way of opening a door in Doom, which I took notice of. Surprisingly few marines, the lack of the balcony, if that even makes sense. Not only that, very few enemies, by the way. 
exit door textures are in the wrong place. And that's not even the half of what goes into moderate decline. I would relate this to stage three or stage four of Leland Kirby's as the caretakers everywhere at the end of time. That is sort of strange. Sort of strange indeed. Oh, nice explosion effect. And yeah, it is kind of strange for the textures to be moving like that. Should probably brighten it, brighten up that segment a little bit better so you could see it better. And here's what I mean about the brain short circuiting. and why they call it central processing for some reason. Yeah, it was, an, um, it was a mess. It was quite the mess. Wow. Just looking at it now, it's quite the mess. so good. <laughs> sure where to put this as a part. I think it's more likely the intermission point between the two halves of the wad and by extension the two halves of the disease. Be ready for everything this wad throws at you because of the because the true can True destruction of coherency as you know it begins now. This is just all levels of wrong. What happened here? Did I pass through here in Forget about it? <laughs> oh man. No. <laughs> no, you gotta be kidding me. No, oh, this is... This is wrong. On so many levels, this is wrong. I wonder if I'm supposed to... <clears throat> oh, jeez. More gray textures. More blank textures. It's like... Is that wall supposed to be moving? Uh, 
and I don't remember pressing that switch. What? I I think I'm starting to question if I actually played Doom at all. <coughs> of no return. This is what I would like to call the post-awareness stages. You lose all awareness from this point forward. You don't even remember, remember if you even have the disease at this point. Because the disease has ravaged your brain pretty hard. But in, in this particular stage, there is still some semblance of coherency. But in the later stage, you lose all sense of cohesion, coherency, and ultimately your sanity. Which is a real problem with this disease. Beyond all belief, beyond anything you've ever known or loved. You're going to be losing a lot of this smile. And in the case of Alzheimer's, you really can't defeat this disease. There's absolutely no cure for it. And just to drive that home, the sixth episode, the sixth map, is pushed one map slot forward, making it C1 and 5. Or rather, E1 and 6 if it was supposed to be the seventh map. God, now I'm forgetting the map numbers for some reason. Anyway, the true destruction coherency begins now. Okay. Okay. E1 and 6. This is E1 and 6. I know this. But... What does it even look like? card man
more key cards. Okay. I barely see any enemies at this point. Okay. Oh, 
from here at this point I'm going in completely ah there you are For those of you confused as to why I just played that whole stage in full, don't worry, your confusion is quite understandable. This is the point where post-awareness confusion start taking place. Like losing your way through a map, or not being able to find the exit to your favorite locations or getting lost in areas that you should know like the back of your hand and the back of your heart too. The lack of demons continues here in this doom wad. Feeling at this point, you're isolated from everyone with the post-awareness confusions. Like, you're going to need help with day-to-day -day activities at this point. From, from, whether that be from a caretaker, or from a loved one, or from whatever assistance you can find at this point. And believe me, these post-awareness confusions, I think they start in the moderate decline stage. This is why I added a little intermission point to the post-awareness stages, because when once everybody finds out that you have dementia, well, 
You're on a one-way trip to isolation, buddy. And believe me, you won't want to be a part of that one-way tr trip because it's quite the living nightmare. You feel like you misplaced things. That's that's only mild compared to what you feel in the post-awareness stages. Believe me, losing everything that you've held near and dear to you, it's quite a living hell. And that's not even, even getting into what comes up next after the post-awareness confusions because who boy it is a nightmare when you see it and my mom knows some people who died from dementia like her other grandmother died from dementia and I know some people who, who were professionals in their careers who died from dementia for example Pat Summit died from dementia. And there may be people who you hold near and dear that have died from dementia. Your parents or grandparents may have died from dementia. Your loved ones may have died from dementia. When people make fun of dementia, in the media, in front of people who have experienced it, like not for themselves, but they've had loved ones go through it. Well, it makes them pretty mad, to be honest. And that's, and that's the, and that's not the post awareness confusions talking. Oh boy. After the post awareness confusions, get ready for some psychological horror. By psychological horror, I'm not talking about the horror you find in movies, TV shows, video games, books or any sort of medium in general, that would qualify under the realm of fiction. No. This is a real psychological horror on a whole different level. Central processing. Okay. Oh my. Lord. Don't tell me I'm entering another one of these. Oh jeez. Everything feels weird. And scary. Is that supposed to be the exit door? Why are the textures moving? <laughs> no mini map. I'm going in completely blind. Let's get way out of here. Okay. <coughs> a yellow key card. What? Where am I supposed to find it? 
In this black and inky void. Okay. Huh. Help from this. And how's that gonna help me? Am I even going the right way? Feels like to suffer from Alzheimer's disease because if it if this is the case, it sure is hella creepy. No mini map, so. I have no landmarks, no way to tell where I'm going. I feel like I've been going around in circles from over most of the past couple of hours or so. <clears throat> oh, I recognize this this door. The one that needs the yellow key card. But how do I get the yellow key card? Frustrating. Even worse when you can't find your own way. Yikes. John Romero. This is a complete joke. Like I can't remember anything anymore. And that 
What is that supposed to be? If anyone knows in the comments, please tell me. Some semblance of some semblance of calm right now would really help because I feel like I am literally losing my mind right now. supposed to get through here. Not even the minimap can guide me. I've been going circles for the past hour or so. The past couple of hours, maybe. Get through here, man. <clears throat> You're all too far. Come on, man. Where's the yellow card? Jeez. 
I've seen speed murders complete this thing in a few minutes or a few hours. But for me, Strange, now even the gray textures are moving. <gasps> there be an exit, any exit. <laughs> oh, armor bonus? Yeah, I like that's gonna help in my end. Stumbling around. Helpless, defenseless. In all forms of less. And right now, thanks to my blank minimap, I'm going completely blind. I've been here for like 15 minutes in game time already. This is just freaky beyond all belief. <laughs> find the yellow key card.
Either I'm going crazy or the game is screwing with me big time. And I don't know which one it is. I think it's both. <sighs> I see a couple of exit doors, <laughs> but neither are the exits. Oh, man. Yeah, the frustration and confusion, <laughs> it's real right now. I feel like I've been wondering this same loop for quite a long time.
gotta be kidding me. Thirty minutes here. But it feels like I've been going on forever. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <coughs> All right, so. <coughs> now I need to find this uh, <coughs> hidden space somewhere. Still recording. Where is it? Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
Same area but mirrored? <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, I'm actually thankful I found this secret. from here. Uh. Still need the freaking yellow key card? Uh. Uh. I thought that wall had it. Let's go back to the walk and see what we can what else we can dig up. Huh. I have some sort of mini map, but I don't.
question is, I don't remember which boy put it. The secret of the nifty texture around uh, uh, here, maybe. Uh. Which one am I even looking at?
Okay. Now we're back right to where we started. Wait, did I already go through here? See the next door, but it's not the exit. Uh-huh. 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 
boy. If you thought post-awareness confusions were bad, if you thought losing your way in a place you should already be familiar with was bad, and by bad I mean just bad, what I was experiencing it was ten times worse. The stage we're on is when advanced plaque entanglement comes into play. You are at a point where the unfamiliar may sound and feel familiar. And there's a good reason why people say that the unfamiliar sounds and feels familiar. I've sped this up to get through the stage as much as possible and to get as much information about the stage to you in as short a time as possible. But still, seeing such a problem occurring not just in your own brain, but your own body, your brain is like the mind that gives you the will to stay alive and the heart feeds blood into that brain and without the brain working the heart simply somehow ceases to function but when you're essentially told that you have the diagnosis of dementia, you suddenly realize you're living on borrowed time. It is a diagnosis I hope no one has. And for good reason. Now, you may make fun of the acronym for advanced plaque entanglement being ape but believe me what the acronym actually spells out is far from funny it is the most unfunny thing you could ever even think of now that I've ranged about that Let's get on to the final stage, and believe me, this final stage is like the end credits of your life.
Oh good god, where's the music? Oh jeez. The dementia addled brain in its last breath of life. The brain is so diseased, so distraught, so confused that it forgets that you even forgot. It forgets you even had dementia. It gets people, places, families, friends, everything. It is that bad. However, not all hope is lost. Some people with dementia will experience a special phenomenon. For those lucky enough to experience it, it is like one final breath of fresh air, one final chance to reunite with loved ones as they hadn't in years. After all this build up, I bet you're wondering what it is, right? Well, let's find out. Oh, we made it to the end. <coughs> and we're back at we one and more. I remember this Surprised that we reached the end? 
This entrance door is actually an exit to something. We have reached the point of what people with dementia call a phenomenon known as terminal lucidity, which is a phenomenon where people with dementia recognize places, people, and things that they haven't in years. They are able to tell the stories of their life with this disease and eventually with enough time they can tell their, their life to them before they pass away. You heard me right. Terminal lucidity is exactly what it is. Terminal. Meaning that the person with dementia remembers everything they've seen up until the, the point where they had dementia and then unceremoniously as, as we have experienced it, the person would inevitably pass away. That's right. In this case, Doom Guy remembers everything he's seen up until this point. And then, unfortunately, as luck would have it, he dies. But not before firing off a few starter shotgun rounds in his memory and believe me we all deserve a final starter shotgun salute if you're a marine you know what the what a gun salute means although with that said we probably reach the point of death. What the? No start to play one down. That's it. Well, folks, looks like that's how the lot is. This is the point where all brain activity dies. Yep, you guessed it. This is a dementia victim in the moments of their death. Peace for the victim and eventually for their loved ones as well. So, yeah. I hope this gave some of you a look into the stages of the dementia. I wanted to do this as a part two to my gameplay video for quite a while to add a supplementary material because I feel like I rushed through in the, in the initial playthrough video. So I wanted to get a more inform informational walkthrough into the disease itself. So, hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if, if, if you think this video actually helped you or helped someone you know deal with someone who has dealt with dementia. I know my mom sure dealt with people who have died because of dementia. It's kind of depressing when you think about it. Anyways, with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everyone.